Hello, soul family. This reading is going to be for all signs. This reading is timeless, so it doesn't matter when I made it or posted it. What matters is when it showed up on your For You page, when you felt drawn to this reading. That's when it was most likely a sign for you. I'm going to use this deck that I don't use often. This is the Gregory Scott tarot deck. So, you know, it might take me a little while to like look at each card a little longer than my typical. You know, when I use these decks that I work with a lot, you know, you have a kind of a predetermined uh, definition for each card, but, and in this case, it is still a tarot card. So I still might use kind of that predetermined definition, but a lot of times I like, I prefer to, to read intuitively and to look at the images and if they're different, which often they are in these different decks, they're sometimes they're very different than, um, than my standard deck, my, my main deck. So bear with me if I have to take a minute to figure this out. Spirit, what is this reading about for all signs? What's coming in for them? Okay, so we have, the first one out is six of swords, we have three of swords and five of wands. Okay, so here is a situation. Wow, yeah, I mean, in the past, because I feel like this is past energy with the five of wands because it means the situation can change. This could be current, could be future, but I think it's past, you know? The five of wands represents like chaos, competition, um, maybe even winning at all costs. So I see this guy here, he's, he's kind of battling these smaller people, but there's a bunch of them. So that might have some significance to you in this situation where, like I said, he seems bigger and Granted, they're farther off in the distance, so maybe that's why they seem smaller, but they seem like they're either kids or just a lot smaller. But like I said, there's more of them, so it's like he's about to battle them. And it's almost like they're guarding the entrance to this city that he wants to get in. So I don't know if that pertains or resonates to you with any kind of situation you've been in in the past or currently, but again, it is a five, so that means the situation will change or can change. The Three of Swords is, you know, this caused a lot of heartbreak, probably for you, could be for this other person, but it's probably for you. I see somebody outside the window. There's like a guy outside the window and he's kind of like walking away. So this might be, you know, that you fought with somebody, maybe they walked away, but this hurts you a lot. And Three of Swords, you know, there's three of them. So sometimes that can mean another person. So whatever the case here, there might have been another person involved. Might have been more than one person. Could have been a lot of people that, you know, you were like fighting against. I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. So take it how it resonates with you. But there's definitely some situation where there was arguments, um, maybe having to stand your ground, fighting with somebody, but it left you very hurt or this other person, but probably you. Six of Swords though, typically that's moving into calmer waters, but let me see here. So here's a guy, he's in a rowboat and there's all these monsters around him. He is being, so he's probably moving into calmer waters. I can't really tell from this picture, but he's got these like imps trying to get in them and these other kind of monsters. So all these monsters, so maybe your shadow side, but the energy that's come out so far is just, you know, a very tough situation where you're arguing with somebody, it hurts you, and you might still be kind of haunted by these negative memories or things that, you know, that hurt you in the past, these thoughts. But like I said, the Six of Swords is usually moving into calmer water. So let's find out more. What's going on with this deck? What's going on with this particular reading? What is the Six of Swords? What is the Six of Swords? Okay, all right, nice. Okay, so we got the wheel, Wheel of Fortune. Typically, that's moving into a new cycle, new lucky cycle, but let me look at the picture here. 
Yeah, so in this picture down below the wheel, it freaking looks like hell. Look at that down there. But up above the wheel, it looks like heaven. And you've got butterflies, you know, so that's change. And there's angels. So it's almost like this guy's closing his eyes and he's hoping that this wheel turns in his favor. So it's almost like you have been, you or another person, could be another person, but I feel like it's you because I said what's coming in for, you know, the person watching. You have been through hell and you were in this fight and it hurt you. Whatever the situation was, I don't even know if this is a love reading. This could have been, you know, could be a work reading, could be family, but something, you felt like you were in hell, you know, and there was fighting and you standing your ground and maybe trying to get into this, this area here. And, but it hurts you a lot. And then, you know, you might be trying to move into calmer waters, but you're still like very haunted by these memories of what happened. So, but the wheel is going to be turning in your favor. You're gonna go from this hell into this heaven. So you're gonna go into a new lucky cycle. So chances are whatever you were, whatever you went through, you know, maybe that was a karmic cycle. And maybe it was for lessons. I don't think we come down here just to be exposed to being tortured for no reason, you know, and going through hardships. I mean, I think typically my belief is that we do come down to earth to better our souls. And so we can't do that without duality. We have to experience the dark to appreciate the light and that kind of thing. So. And, it's, and it makes us stronger, makes our soul stronger. We grow. We can't grow without challenges. So keep that in mind that, that that was all challenges that you've been through. But you're about to go into a good cycle where it's going to feel like you're in heaven, not hell. And, you know, honestly, sometimes I think sometimes we create our own heaven and hell. Now, sometimes circumstances, you know, are that shitty or whatever. And you can't just wish it away. I mean, I, I do believe you create your own reality, all that stuff. But then again, if you look at what's going on in the world, it's like, I don't know. I mean, maybe you create yourself. Because with law of attraction, it's supposed to be, instead of you like living in this 3D plane and then changing everybody else's reality to fit you, it's more that you pull yourself to a higher timeline. That's the belief with the law of attraction is that there's all these multiple timelines. I know it's getting a little bit, um, my definition, <laughs> what I'm telling you is getting a little bit uh, woo woo, but that's the spiritual belief. So I do, I do believe in the law of attraction, definitely for the most part. Like I said in the past videos, you know, you still have to be tested by spirit you're still gonna go through lessons. So not every little thing is gonna be perfect and be the way you want it to be, right? So, um, but in this case, I think the lesson that you just went through is about to be over and you're about to go into a new cycle. Now keep in mind, life is cyclical. That's why the world and the wheel are, you know, two big cards is because sometimes when you're up, sometimes things go south. Life is cyclical, just like our economy here in the United States. It's cyclical. I'm sure every other country is too, but we have recessions. We have ups and downs. Right now, we're going through a rough time in the world, you know, with corona, and that's causing, you know, bottlenecks and supplies and money. But, you know, after a period of time, it will rebound, okay? I mean, life is cyclical. If you look back through history, and by the way, history does repeat itself as well, so you need to learn from history, but, you know, it's not like there weren't bad things in history. I know it can feel like it's the end of the world and we've definitely gone through a few crazy ass years. But if you look back in history, there's always been craziness. So the good news is we're going to the age of Aquarius instead of Pisces. So anyway, instead of blabbing all day about that, just talking about cycles. Something to keep in mind, you know, is when when you're on a high, when you're doing good, really appreciate that moment. Really appreciate it because, you know, there might be a cycle of a down where you have to learn another lesson. And when you're down, know that it will, you'll get through it just like you always have and always will. You'll, you'll get through it. Life goes on. 
And some people pass away and that's very sad for the people that are still here living. Very, 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 very sad. I'm not taking that away from them, but I also believe, you know, in heaven. So if you're a good person, I don't think you have to be perfect, honestly. I think if you're just a generally a good person and you believe in, you know, that that's where you're going to go, then I think you're, you create, that's what I was trying to say when I started this, is I believe you create, sometimes you create your own heaven and hell just in your own mind frame. And that's why with spirituality, how they talk about levels of consciousness, when you're vibing high, you're creating happiness for yourself. If you're vibing low, you could be vibing low and have everything fine. I know somebody who lives in a nice, comfortable house, and even though his life is not perfect, he, sometimes he can be very, very pessimistic. And I'm just like, that's gotta make him very unhappy. He's probably depressed or whatever. But if he were to have a gratitude journal, you know, in those days when I say something to him about that, about having a gratitude, you know, showing gratitude or whatever, he seems to get happier. So it's really sometimes, for, for a lot of people, I think they create their own house, is what I'm saying. Um, now, like I said, there are extreme situations where people are literally in bad situations. I'm not, I'm not saying, you know, I'm not trying to be unrealistic, but anyway. What else? What is this uh, Wheel of Fortune? What's coming in? What's coming in for this person? What is coming in? See? The wheel of the year, that's the wheel of fortune. That is double confirmation. So I pick up another deck and three cards pop out. One of them is the last card. See that beautiful synchronicity? I said I pick up this deck over here and out of this deck, three cards pop out. And one of them is the same card that just popped out. What a synchronicity. Thank you, Spirit. I love it when Spirit pops out multiple of one card, especially in that case where it was like, boom. So again, the wheel of the year, going into a new lucky cycle. Let's look at this imagery to see if there's anything different. You know, he's got a wheel. This one has runes on it, but I don't know how to read runes just yet. So um, this one has, okay, so this one has the different like seasons for like pagans. So you've got like Samhain, Yule, what is this? Embolo? I don't know what that is. Ostara, El Beltane, Litha. I don't know how to pronounce that. And Mabon. And there's a hawk up there. Let's see. So it's like it's starting on Yule. So you're definitely going into a new cycle, new lucky cycle, because this is the wheel of the year, which would be similar to the wheel of fortune. But it's also almost like you're gonna spin this, spin this wheel and it's gonna tell you one of these times of years or one of these celebrations. So I guess that something's going to be happening, you know, at some point during the next year. But we're gonna get into that to make sure that I'm picking up that message correctly. Either way, this is confirmation that you're going into a new cycle and you're gonna be getting out of heaven and into hell. So whatever, whoever this is for, if this resonates with you and you've been through a really tough time of arguments, of being hurt, of even being like tormented by these monsters, by these you know, bad memories or whatever. And like I said, it might have to do with somebody walking away. You're going to go into a new cycle. So, and in that cycle, we have harvest. We have harvest. I don't know, this deck, you know, it's different. It's, I don't know what card that would go with in a regular deck, but either way, I mean, what is, we know what harvest means. It means that you're going to have an abundance of something. I mean, you'd think it would have to do with the situation, although it could just be that, you know, okay, you had a bad time, spirit wants to reward you and, and let your luck turn around. So either way, your luck's turn around. So some kind of harvest. So this could be money, it could be love, it could be, you know, this guy's got a lot of food here and he's got all these little elves helping him, that's cute. It's him and a, and a person, a mate. So, you know, he's got this home. You know, this might be like a 10 of pentacles or something. 
type card, you know, it's harvest. So that's awesome. So that's what's coming in for you. And then we have page of wands. So yeah, somebody, I feel like this is somebody is going to come in to make an offer. You know, it is, this person is not the king. He is, a, he's a young boy. So this offer might be on the immature side or this person might be young or um, they might be immature, but he's definitely got his wand there. He's trying to do some magic. So maybe this person's manifesting this. It could be you, but I think this is more somebody else bringing something into you, towards you. And like I said, there's this, like, there's this donkey there and it's like the donkey's helping to carry some of that abundance. So maybe this is what's bringing the harvest in is this page of wands. Maybe I should have talked about this card first before that card is kind of what I'm feeling. Like here's somebody coming in trying to manifest some things for you and manifest this harvest. So I don't know if that's a harvest of love, money, but some kind of offer. So yeah, like it's almost like I probably should have talked about this first. It's my, my gut feeling. Um, I feel like the harvest is coming in, but like if I would have talked about this first, I would have said, okay, somebody's coming in with an offer, but it might start off not huge. It might start off kind of um, not seeming like a huge abundance, but eventually it is a harvest. It turns into a harvest. So it's, yeah, he's like, he's like doing his magic on these plants. So it's almost like this is the prep work to come into the harvest. I'm almost seeing also like, this is a young boy and as he grows up, it turns into a harvest. So, you know, so it's basically going from a young boy doing his magic on these plants to all of a sudden a man, you know, getting, you know, collecting his harvest. So like I said, it might, whatever this is coming in might not, it might not be big at first. You know, something, sometimes this harvest can happen so gradually that you don't even realize it's happening. Like, let's say what I'm doing, you know, I would have loved for it to just blow up like some people. That would have been fun. Although I don't think I was ready for that. And I think I had money blocks and I think that that happened for a reason, but it doesn't mean it won't be successful in the long run. In a couple of years, you know, I might have this major harvest, but it's happening quote unquote so slowly that maybe it doesn't feel like this major harvest yet, but in, you know, three or four years, I could look back and go, damn, if I wouldn't have started that, if I wouldn't have done this, you know, building whatever it is you're passionate about, building your business, it doesn't mean you have to quit your job and throw yourself into something else unless you have, you know, money saved up or whatever. Um, but, you know, you might have a side hobby, a side hustle, and it's your passion and you might as well do it on the side. And maybe it's something that builds, you build the blocks. Most businesses are. And then maybe someday you get to the point where you can let go of what doesn't serve you or whatever. But like Aaron Daughtry, is that his, I think that's how you say his name. You know, I watched him when I first started getting into spirituality and like he talks about how he was a shoe salesman and just, you know, didn't have, wasn't happy with life and whatever. And it's not like he started a YouTube channel and then overnight could quit his job. It took him like two or three years. But had he not started that channel, had he not gotten started, and yeah, you know, it's hard work to keep them both going at the same time. I'm not going to lie. It's hard to work a full-time job and still keep this up. But if you don't get started, then three years from now, you're going to be in the same place, you know. So you might as well at least try if it's your passion. So I don't, I don't even think this reading has to do with your passion and your craft and stuff, but those two cards made me think of that. I mean, that could even be, this could even be a love reading. I still honestly don't know. And I think sometimes, like I've mentioned in the past, spirit wants me to keep this very general because this could be a love reading for some, but also this could be, you know, this could be a, um, a reading about your, your passion, your soul's purpose. Maybe you had competition with people. Maybe there was a bunch of little people but there were so many of them that was keeping you out of the kingdom. And maybe you felt like you had to fight them. Even though you were bigger, there was a lot of them. And maybe this caused heartache because you couldn't get past them because there were so many of them, you didn't want to get hurt. And maybe, you know, this tormented you for a while. But like I said, 
if that's the case or whether it's a love reading or whether it's you know a fight with a family member you are going into a new cycle where you're going to feel like you're going from hell to heaven you are confirmation with the wheel it might not start off big whatever's coming in might not start off big because it's a page but you know this page whatever's coming in they're proud of it He's even got his hand down, like doing his magic. It's like they're manifesting you or you manifesting this, but it's gonna lead to a big harvest. So that's your reading for this, but I'm also now gonna go into a bonus reading, an extended, where we're gonna find out timing. Cause I mean, I don't know what, this could be a couple of years. I don't know, it may take a while for the harvest, but we're gonna find out what's literally coming in in the next six months to a year or sooner, if this message is for you. You know, I forgot to mention in the beginning, it's a general collective. So you've got to use your, um, your own intuition to know if it's for you. Like I've said in the past, if you see multiple readings that kind of say the same thing or have these little details in them, and it's just something that sticks out to you, that's, that's when you know to take it. If you feel like, I know this is a sign, you feel it, you don't know how you know, but you do, that's when it's a sign. Um, when you're vibing higher, you, you can recognize signs better than if you're vibing low. If you're vibing low, you don't you don't typically see them around. When you're vibing higher, that's how you know if you're vibing high. If, if your signs and synchronicities are just you're probably vibing really high. Right now we're going through Mercury retrograde for another like week and a half, I think it's like June 3rd, oh my God. So I can't wait for that to be over because I feel like I'm kind of not vibing high and I need to get up there. So you know what, I mean, we're human. It's I consider myself very spiritual and I want to vibe high, but you know, not sometimes it's just the cycles of the moon and the planets and all that stuff. Okay. So yeah, so I'm going to go into an extended and you know, we're going to get some super G some wonderful details here. Um, the synchronicities really pop out in the extent. Oh, that is weird. That's fucking freaking me out. Sorry, I'm doing laundry in there. I don't know, maybe my laundry machine is going haywire. When I end this, I'm gonna have to go check, but something fell on the ground, like a, a cap of some kind in there, that's weird. I mean, it could have just been my laundry machine going haywire and pushing something off, but it kind of freaked me out, sorry. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go into the extended. So if you wanna watch that, you can go down to the description box below and click on the link there. It'll take you to my Patreon. You know, I keep having these weird things happen around me more and more. I think when you go through a spiritual awakening and you start getting more spiritual, it happens, especially if you're doing readings and stuff. So I do clear my space before these readings and ask Archangel Michael to keep all negative entities away. I visualize, you know, bright white light, and kind of visualize all the negative entities, all these monsters getting pushed away, you know. So, but that kind of freaked me out a little. Okay, so I'm sorry if that distracted me. Um, I like to throw out the, you know, asking for your likes, comments, shares, subscribes, definitely the subscribes, please. Um, it helps me grow my channel, helps me to focus on your energy for the future. And the likes, you know, it's free and it takes a second. It's, you're not gonna claim the reading if you like it just because you hit like. Um, and it helps me, and like I said, it helps me to help others. So really, if you help a light worker, you're helping the world. So why the fuck not, right? Yeah. Okay, unless you just really hate my video. And if that's the case, then what are you doing watching it? Especially this far, yeah? But if you like it and you appreciate my time, I'd appreciate a like and a comment and a share and a subscribe or whatever you can do. It takes a second. All right, so yeah, I mean, if you wanna watch the extended, that's another way to support me, but um, it's another way to get exclusive content. It's exclusive details, the details that no one else is gonna have here. So we're gonna find out more, like what is going on here? We're gonna try to figure out if this is love or money. Um, and you know, there might be some people that aren't gonna watch the extended and they, they were supposed to, you know, supposed to be kept general for them, but maybe for other people who watch the extended, maybe they're supposed to know a different message or something like that. So I don't know. If your soul feels drawn to it, go for it. Um, my Patreon is $5.55. That's not even just this one reading. That's all the readings I've done up until this point and all the readings that I'll continue to do going forward for whatever tier, you know, if you sign up for that tier, um, cause I have other tiers as well. And then 
you know, for whatever month you pay for. So it is, you know, I think you can sign up to have it monthly, but you can also cancel it at any time. I appreciate it if you stay monthly because that supports me and keeps me um, able to continue to do this and hopefully someday do it full time. So yeah, I appreciate it. I will see you in the extended. I'm gonna go check that sound and figure out what in the world that was. See you on the extended, on the flip side, bye.